Today, I want to introduce you to my Max for Life device that lets you create a text display that you can use as a set list or for song notes right inside your Ableton project. But before we get started, make sure you download the device from the link in the description below. Using a laptop on stage can be quite tricky because your setup might not allow for a good view at the monitor. Now the layout and text in Ableton can get quite small on a laptop screen. And if you're like me, who likes the occasional reassuring glance at the project, just to check I'm on the correct sound patch or I start the right backing track, this can be quite annoying. Now Ableton has its own zoom display function built in, but as you can see, the display gets quite cramped and especially for bigger projects, this might not always be the best solution. I wanted to create a text display that can float above my normal Ableton window, is customizable in size and design, and can be controlled with automation. Here's what I came up with. First, we want to drag and drop our device onto an empty MIDI track. We can ignore the MIDI routing, but just to avoid confusion, I still like to set the MIDI from to no input. As you can see, the device is fairly simple. We've got a button to open our floating window. We've got 28 text fields and we have a clear all button to clear all the text fields at once. For demonstration purposes, we're going to put some text in the first three fields. You can simply move through the fields by using the tab key on your keyboard. The device comfortably displays up to three lines of text, so why not add some helpful notes about the song or a reminder of the song key? The numbers next to the text fields don't relate to the scenes in your project, but rather the automation target. So the order you put your text in here doesn't really matter for now. Now we need to let Ableton know which text field we want to have on the display at what point. For this, we're going to use dummy clips. Dummy clips simply are MIDI clips that don't contain any MIDI notes, but carry some other information. In this case, the clips will select the text field for our display window. So let's add an empty MIDI clip and go to the envelope section in the clip view. Here we want to select the setlist device and the function song number. And now we simply set the envelope to the number of the window we would like to have displayed. The loop function can be turned off as we only need the text field to be selected once. Another setting to be considered is the quantization in the launch submenu. I like to set this to none, which means the text will be displayed before the song starts. In this case, if I accidentally trigger the wrong song, I still have time to stop it from playing. Of course, we can also let the envelopes move through multiple text fields within one MIDI clip. Now let's have a look at our display window. This is a floating window, which means it will always stay in the foreground and still allow us to control Ableton behind it. We can adjust the size of the window by simply dragging one of the corners and reposition it by dragging the title bar. Let's launch our first scene to get a preview of the text. At the top of the window, we have a fader to adjust the font size and two color selectors to pick the background color and the text color. All this means you can completely customize the window to your needs and Ableton will save these settings with the project and recall them the next time you open it. Now, if we go through our scenes, the dummy clips will always pick the required text fields to be displayed. And that's it. I hope this device is helpful for some of you out there. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Thanks for watching.